We all know and use large language models such as ChatGPT or Claude3. But the cost to train them is incredibly high. It takes a long time and small startups won't be able to compete anymore in the future. Luckily, there's another approach that is very promising. Small language models. As their name already suggests, they are a lot smaller than their larger counterparts and still very powerful. LLMs are trained on billions, sometimes even trillions of parameters. For example, GPT-4 is trained on 1.76 trillion parameters. V3, Microsoft's latest SLM, is only trained on 3.8 billion parameters and outperforms much larger models. Not GPT-4, of course. Of course, the billions and trillions of parameters that large language models are trained on makes them much more versatile and powerful. But it also has disadvantages. For example, the huge costs that are needed to train them, the huge energy consumption and also the storage needs. Which is why smaller startups cannot compete with large tech giants much longer. It is just too expensive. Small language models, on the other hand, need much less compute. It is possible to run them offline on everyday use local devices such as your smartphone, which is also very promising for widespread adoption. While not as versatile, they are still very powerful and can outperform much larger models, especially when they are trained on specific tasks. But how the heck is that possible with such small amounts of data? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's have a look at the difference in training. I won't go into self-supervised learning or reinforcement learning here. The important thing to understand is that LLMs, as the name already suggests, are trained on large amounts of data. Or let's rather say massive amounts of data. SLMs are instead trained on very specific high quality data sets. One approach Microsoft talks about is how they created tiny stories. A dataset consisting out of stories that a three or four year old could understand. They generated multiple different stories out of a pool of 3000 words. Before this approach, models with around 125 million parameters, such as GPT-Neo or GPT-2, can rarely generate coherent and consistent English text beyond a few words, even after extensive training. Tiny stories, however, can be used to train and evaluate SLMs that are much smaller and the state-of-the-art models below 10 million parameters, yet still produce a diverse set of fluent and consistent stories that are comparable or superior to those generated by larger and more complex models. Moreover, despite of the small size of the models, we still observe an emergence of reasoning capabilities, knowledge of general facts and ability to follow certain instructions. Which is insane! And if you don't get the significance of this, they just went down from a 125 million parameter big model to a 10 million parameter big model and they got much stronger results. So you really see what a high quality data set can mean for the power of language models. Of course, models such as V3 with 3.8 billion parameters are still much, much larger than 10 million, but it's still very, very small compared to LLMs. Other things you can do to get high quality and small amounts of data is to remove redundant parts. When training an LLM in the data, many things often repeat in different ways and you can reduce the data set significantly if you just remove that. Then of course, small language models are often domain specific. So you tailor them specifically to what their task is going to be. And by the way, this has the amazing side effect that small language models are much less prone to hallucination, which could make possible for them to operate in critical areas and could make them useful in doing critical tasks. Now, let's have a look over a few different very prominent small language models. One important thing to note here is that small language models often come in families. Some of them a bit smaller, some of them a bit larger, some of them trained on different tasks. And 
this shouldn't really surprise anyone here if you have paid attention to the video so far. I already mentioned V3 from Microsoft and with 3.8 billion parameters it is relatively small yet surprisingly powerful and you can test it if you want. So let's head over. All right, and here you can use C3. And one of the most impressive things about this, I believe, is this 128,000 token context window, which is pretty cool. So let's just say, um, please summarize the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Away for me. All right, and let's see how that works. By the way, when you scroll down here, you can also see how V3 um, compares to other models on all of these different tests here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if you want to, you can pause and go through that. I will not talk to all of these tests. Okay, be proactive, begin with that in mind. Put first things first, think when win, seek first, understand when to be understood. Synergize and sharpen the saw. That looks right to me. Perfect. Now, let's try something more funny here. Um, please come up with an alliteration for every habit. Um, pioneer your path, not just where you are. Envision your end, then shut your start. Okay. Prioritize prime, not just prime time. Okay. Listen first and yeah, okay. I mean, not so sustain your saw, not just saw dust. Not that great of an alliteration spot. Well, I mean, then again, maybe it's not the easiest thing to do. Man, I really need to come up with a preset set of questions to make my kind of own small benchmark here to ask language models what else could I try and test here to compare it maybe to ChatGPT. Let me just paste um, the script of this video. Whoops. I wanted to ask it to summarize and not immediately put it in. Well, let's say what it says to that. Okay, it just goes... Ah, okay. Well, it talks about the other small language models. And gives me alliterations. Um, anyway, no, I want to summarize all that, but apparently it reads through that, so that's good. Please summarize this script briefly. But yeah, apparently it got all the small language models that I talk about here. <laughs> so a bit foreshadowing of the rest of the video. So it reads through the whole whole text. That's pretty good. And here we have a small summary. summary. Yeah, you can read through that if you want. That sounds pretty good to me. So yeah, if you want to, you can just head over here. You, you find the link in the description and play around with V3 yourself if you want. Next, we have Meta's Llama 3 with 8 billion parameters. And by the way, just like all the small language models I'm mentioning here, it's completely open source. So if you want to use them, you can go over to Hugging Face or Olama and download them for your local device, which is exactly what small language models are intended for. Then, of course, we have Google's Gemma models. Gemma 1 with 7 billion parameters still sounds relatively small, whereas the soon-to-be-released Gemma 2 with 27 billion parameters already sounds quite big. But I guess we can still count it as an SLM. Just. And of course, we don't want to forget about Apple's open ELM models, ranging from 270 million to about 3 billion parameters. They are amongst the smallest, <laughs> small language models out there. Of course, there are many more, which just further underlines their potential and significance in AI development. Especially when it comes to new startups and smaller AI companies, these small language models could be the saving grace that allows them to still compete with big tech. You could imagine thousands, if not even millions of specialized niche applications for SLMs where they can run locally. 
So yes, SLMs could be the next really big thing when it comes to AI development and they prove that it's not always just about size. Another big thing in AI tech could be an approach that is not a language model at all, but rather combines the strengths of a language model with the strengths of multiple different approaches to AI and AGI. Yes, I'm talking about OpenCock Hyperon, and you can find more about what it is, how it works, in this quick small breakdown video right over here. And usually I write, don't forget to like on the whiteboard, but I totally forgot it. I totally forgot to write anything on the whiteboard at all. So if you're still here, it would be amazing if you could leave a like.